Welcome back. I'm Marina Kim with the latest news from Kazakhstan. On the eve of President's anniversary, the workers of the oil and gas industry from southern Kazakhstan organized a strike protesting against the new wage policies that the management of the Kazmunai Gas and Razvedka mining companies are trying to introduce since the beginning of this year. The hunger strike was suspended, but the rallies continue as over 200 workers of the Sormunai Gas Oil Extracting Company protest against the new wage payment system in western Kazakhstan. On Friday morning, workers started a hunger strike, but later in the day cancelled it, saying it is too early for measures like this. Oil and gas extraction companies of Atarao and Mangistau regions have stopped its operations due to the rally, as workers do not want to lose their health hazard salary supplement. We continue striking and our problems still remain unsolved. The salary was not paid yet. On Thursday evening, the oil and gas extraction department employees of the Dosor Munai Gas and the production unit of the Empa Munai Gas refused to come to work. The talk between the workers and the company management were held on Friday all day long. Oil and gas industry is facing serious challenges since the beginning of the year. Just last March, the mass strike in Mangistau region involved more than 10,000 workers. Then the employees agreed to some compromises which appeared to be only temporary. The Kazmunai Gas management admits that the strike is in place, but is confident that workers will appreciate the new system once they get fully paid. We have to continue explanation work, says uh, there is a misunderstanding. But when people get their salaries and see the real growth, which they are skeptical about now, then the issue will be resolved. The prosecution office promises to hold inspections of the companies within three days and will establish whether or not the innovations they introduced are legal. Meanwhile, the workers intend to stop the strike only upon receiving full salaries. In the meantime, nine workers from the neighboring oil deposit Janajol have filed a lawsuit against their employers. They have appealed the initial ruling of the court, which recognized their rally illegitimate and fined its participants five U.S. dollars. On June 16th, more than 300 displeased workers of the Akte Bemunai Gas started striking in front of the boarding house. The next day, they were joined by 500 people at Kinkiyak deposit. Protesters demanded to fire several top managers and increase wages. It wasn't actually a strike, it was just an expression of discontent about the low salaries. We were not holding posters or violating any laws. On Friday morning, three desperate women climbed the roof of a 12-story building to strike against the Agrarian University Administration's allegedly illegal decision to dismiss the janitors. The women demand to restore them in their positions. On Friday morning, Janar Ahmetov, along with two of her colleagues, climbed the roof of a 12-story building and blocked the roof access. Representatives of the prosecutor's office, a block policeman, and municipal services head, as well as the university's security personnel, all came to negotiate with the desperate women. Supposedly, they were fired from said education institution for violating the work discipline. The protesters, though, say their rights for labor were violated. It was revealed later that the women had written a complaint to President Nazarbayev about the university rector. Akhmetova's husband was hired by the university to renovate the sauna, but then didn't pay him after the completion of works, saying that the university has no sauna. Also, when the university runs out of the dormitory rooms, it offers students to rent apartments in this building, but 20 of them belong to Rector Bulashev. When the women complained about it through their letter, they were persecuted by the university management. In Astana, the Yisil District Court has announced a verdict on the so-called case of the statisticians. The Trade and Industry Chamber ex-president Serik Turjanov was sentenced to nine years in a maximum security prison with confiscation of property. The two other figurants of the case, Norman Bayanov and Birlik Mindubayev from the Statistics Agency, received sentences of six and five years respectively. The 200 pages court decision was read by Judge Dasirov during six hours. This was akin to the proceedings on the case of ecologists, which was led by the same judge. This time, though, the judge didn't feel well and announced three 10 minute breaks during the reading. At the time of debates, the prosecution asked to sentence the convicts to terms between six and ten years. The judge has lifted all accusations of Serik Turjanov on the space project and Valut Transit Bank episodes because the statute of limitation has expired. Despite this, the final sentence to all convicted was reduced to only one year.
The court sees the convicts not guilty players as self-defense. In issuing sentences to Bayanov, Turjanov and Medibayev, the court took into account the nature of gravity and the committed crimes. Therefore, it considers that reformation of the convicts is possible only through the real isolation from the society. The court has found all the arguments made by the convicts' lawyers unfounded. It established that Serik Turjanov, Nurman Bayanov and Birlik Mindibayev have planned in advance the embezzlement of the state budget money during the last year's census campaign. In criminal conspiracy with the ex-head of the statistics agency Anar Mishibayeva, the letter was sentenced by default as she is currently on the run. The properties of convicted are subject for confiscation and they will have to compensate the damages caused to the statistics agency in the amount of about 4 million US dollars. Families and lawyers of the convicted refrained from commenting the verdict saying only that they will appeal the decision. The detention conditions of human rights activist Evgeny Zhovtis are too severe. This was stated on Friday by his colleague, the vice president of the International Human Rights Organization, Alice Belitsky, who visited the imprisoned activist on Thursday. According to Belarusian human rights activist Evgeny Zhovtis has certain health problems. He is being heavily guarded and he is not able to leave the colony. The colleagues met in the presence of an escort with the meeting lasting for one and a half hours. Zhovtis can use a computer and reply to the posts in his blog, but he is prohibited to contact any of his ex-employees and fellows. Overall, Belietsky had contradictory impressions of the visit. Zhovtis has a job in the colony, but he was offered only this one job, despite asking for other options available in the town. But the officers who guard the convicts didn't agree. He's under serious isolation. In another scandalous case involving the ex-vice emergency minister Blay Sabdalin, the defense has unsuccessful, unsuccessfully attempted to appeal the decision of the first instance court. The officials' complaints were not satisfied. Based on the Article 50, Chapter 3 of the Kaza Criminal Code on the Cumulative Crime and to replacing the milder punishment with a more severe one, the convict is sentenced to 10 years in maximum security penal colony with confiscation of property. Earlier, the review of the appeal has been rescheduled for July 2nd. Then the judge didn't find it necessary to explain his decision. On Friday, however, the Court of Appeals decision seemed like a carbon copy of the previous ruling. Sabdalin is accused of lobbying the interests of certain firms when undertaking tenders for governmental contracts and bribing in order to disclose these facts. The suspect, however, denies all allegations. The Court of Appeals judge has made just minor changes of the previous ruling in regard to the episode of violating the material rights. In general, though, he has heard all of our arguments and facts that we presented. On Friday, the detained participants of the Thursday silent rally were issued fines. The prosecution, however, was asking for more severe punishment for the Alga party activists who simply went out to the Baitirek Square holding blank posters. On Thursday, several rallies took place at the same time in a number of Kazakh cities protesting against the law on the leader of nation. Only Astana campaign participants were arrested by the police special forces unit. After conducting explanatory works, the members of the unregistered party Alga were released. However, on Friday, the administrative court judge Kazim Altkalif issued fines of 150 US dollars to each of three arrested activists. I based my actions on the leader of nation law, which states I cannot say anything bad about the president. It is clear that this law contradicts the constitution. The speakers of the parliaments, both chambers and the prime minister who adopted the law should have been prosecuted instead of me. The constitution is the same for everybody. You all perfectly know that should I have written anything on the poster, I would be sentenced to at least one year of imprisonment. The first lawsuit to revoke the law on the leader of nation was submitted by journalist Jana Baitelova on July 2nd. The respondents are the Prime Minister Karim Masimov and Chairman of the Parliament, both Chambers, Kasim Jumar Takayev and Ural Muhammadjanov. The District Court has accepted the suit and promised to give notice just after the President's anniversary celebration. I have serious doubts that I will win the case. Nevertheless, at least I am trying to do something about it. I am trying to deliver to the public the message about the illegitimacy of the law on the leader of nation. Baitelova believes that the law itself states that it will be enforced only upon the president's signing. 
She claims that the Prime Minister had no legal right to sign the law and moreover, the legislation which regards the change of the political system should have been reviewed at the referendum. Similar lawsuits will be filed by some 30 residents of Almaty, Uskaminagorsk, Taras and Aktabe shortly. On Friday, Baitelova visited the city court to file the appeal. Just recently, the journalist was fined 500 US dollars for holding an unassertion rally protesting against the law on the leader of nation.